Father, we praise you. We thank you. For living inside of us. You never leave us. And you never forsake us. We forsake ourselves. But you never forsake us. You do exactly what you say you're going to do. If we will follow you and do what you say. We thank you that you are steadfast. You never change. You're always the same. And you gave us a manual to follow. A manual for life. It has the answer to every single circumstance, situation, blessing, honor, everything. It has the answer. And I thank you for that, sir. I thank you I can trust in it. I thank you that I can believe in it. I thank you that it will do exactly what you said it will do. And that's my faith and that's my trust. And I thank you in Jesus' name. And I pray that the eyes of these men's understanding today will be enlightened, that they will see the hope of the glory of all that you've provided, of all that you've done, and all that you've given, that they will put it into their minds and their thought life. For that's where it works. And we thank you and praise you for it, sir. In Jesus' name, amen. I think of some of you young fellows. I think of what my life was like when I was 30 years old. I thought about the hope that I had, the dream that I had, the plan that I had. 1975, I was 25, God actually wrote and spoke to me and I wrote it down. I still have it in my file in my office here. What he said to me, what he told me to do. And I'm gonna do everything I can to accomplish what he's directed me to do. And this is the hope that I have for you guys. And for you older men, you should be dreaming dreams. You should be having plans. Not to go to the boneyard where you die, but to do something for God. You need to know and be hungry for the thing that God has put in you to do before you were ever conceived in the womb. Do you know what that is? Have you guys taken the time and fast and pray and say, God, what is it that you wanted me to do? What is it you directed my paths to do? What is it you showed me to get involved with? What is it you've asked me to accomplish? Every single person that's ever born has that gift in them. You know when you got somebody that's beat up and downtrodden, don't throw them under the rug. Walk up to them and grab a hold of them and say, don't say God misses you. Don't say God loves you. You know how much of that they've heard? Walk up to them and say, God needs you. Because he had a plan for your life before you were ever conceived in the womb. He needs you. He needs that aspect. You were born for such a time as this. I know that ain't in your brain. I know that ain't in your head. But it can get there. But it isn't going to get there waiting for it. It's going to get there by you doing something about it. 
Because faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. There's no other way. That's how I did it when I was 30 years old. When I was 25, I didn't know nothing. I barely knew my name. Had a college degree and all I know is I don't know nothing. That's what I learned. The more I learned, the more I realized I didn't know nothing. You know why? Because real knowledge comes from the Word of God. You want to learn something value? It's always going to be another scientist, another doctor, another doctorate educator. There's always going to be those people. But man, they don't have what the believer has unless they are one. Because the knowledge of God is the knowledge of the universe. And you can tap into it. You know, I remember years ago, I was pretty young. I watched, I watched the movie. And these guys were fighting one another. And I'm not sure what the fight was all about, but they, when I say fight, they were in, at war. They weren't just a couple of guys fighting in a ring or two neighbors that don't like each other. They were fighting a war. And one of them was just blowing the daylights out of the other one and just firepower blowing down on the place where they were at and just blowing it all up. And when they walked over there, they had con conquered them. And they said, boy, we showed those guys. And these other guys were trying to be friends. But these guys didn't like them. And they wanted them out of their country, out of their place. And they just wanted to be friends. So the war began. And when they went over there, they pulled out, they found this manual that was burnt. And it says the following is the answer to every disease, every issue in life, everything that will ever plague you, and then the rest was burnt. And all those people wanted to do was be friends. But they stopped. That's what we do to a lot of people that we don't like, or homeless, somebody that's doing something, he's down and out. And the neat thing is, is this is the book that answers all those questions. So don't go up to the guy and play Mamby Pamby. Go up there and get his life engaged and tell him. I don't care how beat up he is. I don't care how old he is. I don't care how downtrodden he is, how defeated he is. And many, many people are. Many people are like that and are living in castles and million dollar homes, totally lost. Have no idea who they are, what they are, where they're going, they're miserable. They would never let you know that. But when they sat at home at night, by themselves in the chair when all the demons come around they have nothing to fight it they have no power because they don't understand that we don't wrestle against flesh and blood but against principalities against powers against rulers of darkness against spiritual wickedness in high places therefore put on the whole armor of god they don't know anything about that they won't take the time to listen to something that will give them life because they have no idea that this will bring them life they don't believe it. They don't even look for it. They're not even interested in it. They've listened to the garbage all their life. You don't go up in there and say God loves you. You're wasting your time. You got to give them something they can put their teeth into. How many people have you ever told that to? God has a plan for your life. 
and you're downtrodden and beat up, but God has a plan for your life and God misses you and he needs you. He needs you in the kingdom because you fulfill an integral part of what he's trying to do. But you're living in hell and you're living in, in, in ignorance. But you don't have to. God wrote a book about you. See what I'm saying? Give him something to believe in. Some, give him something to hope in. It's hard to believe in saying God loves you because they spend all their life knowing, well, nobody loves me. Surely if God loves me, then why hasn't he done something? That's the argument you're going to get. If God could love me, and God can, and God's supposed to be all-powerful, why hasn't he done something for me? Is that right? The devil has got him bound. You know he's a liar. You know he's a deceiver. You know all the stuff about the devil but they don't. They don't know who their enemy is. They think it's all the people that don't like them. And yeah, I know some of the people act like the devil, but they're still not his enemy. So I ask again, one must be thoroughly convinced of who his enemy is. We talked a little bit last week about it. We went down through some of the points of it. I'll just review that a smidgen before we jump into this next section. You know who your enemy is? Am I your enemy? Am I your enemy if I come up and look you in the eye and tell you the truth and you don't understand it or don't like it? And you get swallowed up, swelled up in pride, and you say, who does he think he is? And I'm trying to set you free, because that's the truth. We'll set you free. But see, they don't know that. I have a friend I tried to do that with. I don't know if he's a friend. I'm not sure if I should call it that. I've been trying to get into his life for a long time. He's made a disaster out of his life. He's a Christian. I led him to the Lord. Doesn't live around here. But he now does. And I didn't know why. And one morning we were out for breakfast. Not him, but me and another person. And he happened to be in the restaurant. He just happened to be in town. He comes over. Hey, just wanted to see what you old boys are doing. Well, he's in his high 60s. Well, anyways, he went back over and he thought maybe I didn't want to talk to him or something, but I told him, I said, why don't you just come over here and sit down with us? There's nothing wrong with that. Well, he came over and sat down. Now, I, I, I talked to him two years ago, tried to talk to him. I looked him right in the eye and I told him the truth. And he said, you're out of your mind. I said, that's fine. I've been out of my mind for about 45 years, and I'm so thankful. Does the Bible say put on the mind of Christ? Well, then you better be out of yours. That's why nothing gets done. That's why nothing gets accomplished out here. They don't have the mind of Christ. They, they have it, but they don't walk in it. They don't believe it. When it speaks to them, they just... Throw it off as a hunch. Well, I don't think he wants me to do that. Why don't you go next door and tell your neighbor you're sorry for what you did? Well, that's not my fault. It was his fault. That's not what God's trying to get across to you. He's trying to get you to grow up. You know what? It doesn't matter whose fault it is. Ask for forgiveness. Get over there and do it. I don't care how right you think you are. You're never going to be as right as Jesus and he don't treat you that way. You can be the ugliest thing this side of the planet. Pecos, I say. You can be as ugly as can be. And he's still standing there saying, 
man, I love you, dude. I love you. Just get out there and make something happen. Do something big with your life. Hey, I don't believe Jesus. He just does this and blah, blah, blah. I don't believe this and I don't believe that. Oh, man, he said, just keep going, son. Just keep, just keep at He. That's how he talks to you. I'm not talking about how you talk to him. He never changes. He ain't there judging you, pointing the finger at you. All he see, all God sees is Jesus. He's the mediator between God and man. That's all God sees. He doesn't see you're ugly. He doesn't see you're stupid. He doesn't see your dumb things. He doesn't see any of that. He don't see your mistakes. All he sees is that book he wrote about you. And he'll encourage you and talk to you and speak to you all day long. And you can just act so ugly and even curse him and use his name in vain. And he says, oh, just keep going, son. What? Are you out of your mind? So you don't know the love of God. I'm trying to teach it to you. And I'm trying to learn it. All at the same time. I don't have all the answers, but I'm digging. I got a hydro hoe now I use. That's how I dig for it. Yeah, big Bertha. One of you guys can use that thing. You know what I mean? That thing weighs like 45 million pounds or something like that. I'm saying there's a lot of stuff we do we don't realize that we live like the world. That's all the stuff the world does. The world is constantly comparing themselves with themselves. The world is constantly in pride. It's hidden sometimes, but it's pride. Who do you think you are? I have all the answers. I mean, I listen to politicians, and they lie out of their teeth, and it's like, can't they see what they're doing? Can't they see what they're saying? You know what? Some people believe it. Oh, my gosh, yes. Yes. And some people say, holy mackerel, how can you make a statement like that? The president says, I've fixed, I'm, we're, I'm fixing the economy and we're prospering and boy, everything is going amazing. And, and then you got people over here living paycheck to paycheck like 64% of America. Let me tell you what demonic spirits are. These are demons. And I told you, we're going, I'm going to give you the scripture here in a little bit. The demons are spirits that are lost forever. They come pre-Noah, from the people who were lost and could never be redeemed because they became hybrids. They were no longer human. They allowed themselves to do trans transgender stuff. They're really messing around with some stuff they shouldn't be messing with. You shouldn't be doing it. I don't know when that is, when you cross over and it's too late. But when you stop being true human, and you can be, you can take drugs right now, change your DNA, but you screw yourself up and you lose your humanity, you're done. Because only human beings can get born again can go to heaven. Not animals, not hybrids, but demons were the spirits in the people who pre-Noah were non-redeemable because I used to struggle with why in the world God did you not send Jesus during Noah's day? 
get those people saved. I never understood it. For 40 years, I never understood it. And now I know. They weren't savable. Satan was doing everything he could to destroy the spotless lamb of God that was prophesied many, many thousands of years earlier. That Jesus was going to, there's going to be one that comes that bruises your head. And he will be spotless. He will be pure. He'll be the spotless lamb of God. That means he, there'll be no error in him, no misfunction, no GMO, genetically modified. It needed to be the spotless Lamb of God. And that's why we can follow that all the way from Adam to Jesus. We don't know what happened to all those other people, do we? You know what happened to tw Joseph's 12 brothers? You don't have any idea what happened there. It's not written about them. Because Joseph was the lineage of Jesus. And we got thousands of people like that. Had families and branching and branching and branching and branching. Where, who are all those people? They all, everybody here in this planet had to come from Adam. Then from Noah and one of his kids. So these demons have things that they come to you with. Satan taught them. He instructed them. The angels came down and taught them. The fallen ones. The Nephilim. And Jesus had, the, they locked him up. They locked them all up, except Satan. He's the only one that's loose, according to Revelation. I'll show it to you. But I want to talk to you about who these demons are and why it's important to know it. Because it's the way they get into your life. Do you understand me? This is the way they get into your life. First demon, worry. And I'm not going to take the time to study this stuff. I got so much other stuff I got to do. But you guys can figure that out on your own. Number two, fear. Number three, heartache. Number four, anxiety. Number five, bitterness. These are demons. How do they get into your life? It's all around you. You've heard it. You talk to it. You listen to your parents talk it. And they listen to their parents talk it. And they listen to their parents talk it. And it goes back 4,000 years, 5,000, 6,000. So that was, listen, what was released in the garden was good and evil. Do you understand? There was no evil in, in, in Adam and Eve's life until they decided to get the knowledge of good and evil. God didn't want him to have it, but he had to give him a choice. He had angels. They're robots. He created them. Every angel's created, but you're not created. Only Adam. And it was created, he was created in God's image. So you want to know what God looks like? I'm looking at it. Oh, there's a few features that make you a little different. But you're all, you're the same. You're the same as everybody here. There's recognizable things. 
maybe the two eyes, maybe they're blue instead of brown. Blue hair, brown hair, green hair. Bitterness. It's your demons. Stress. Failure. Hatred. Quitting. Lack. Impatience. Now I'm going to get serious. If you allow those demons to cause you to react, this is your fruit. Physical sickness, financial loss, relational destruction, failure at every corner, quitting, giving up. If you allow those demons access and you don't deal with it, they will take you down. And instead of living 120 years, we live 60. All because of that. And science even proves that. They don't understand it the way I just explained it. But they know that if you're anxious and you fear, it isn't long. And your mind is causing your body to secrete certain things in it. And that stuff that you're secreting in it is killing you. The devil knows this. They can't make you sick, but they can make you think the wrong way and you make yourself sick. Do you understand? And if you don't know that, you're, then you're ignorant. As a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. The more worry you have, the more anxiety, the more bitterness, the more stress, it gets stuck in your heart. And the more you get that poison in your heart, out of the abundance of that heart, is how you're going to live. And it'll cause your mouth to talk a certain way. And that'll kill you. Because the power of life and death is in your tongue. I marvel why this simple message, this is simple. I'm a simple man. There's nothing complex about me. The only thing that I got, and some of you guys might be impressed with, is stuff I've had to learn out of this Bible for 45 years, and you haven't learned it yet. That's all. There's nothing else complex about me. There's nothing that I've ever accomplished. I didn't accomplish without him. That I, I did not accomplish it without him. Many times I've turned down wealth. Lots of it. One time a million dollars. I let it go because I said, I don't want anybody to ever say anything other than God bless me. And I said, take it away. I'm not interested. And yet most people spend their entire lifetime grabbing, scratching, living their whole life making money because they can't get enough. Too many things. And in the process, they develop those principles, those spirits, because those spirits are around all of us. And they are constantly trying to get an inroad 
into your life. Now, what I'm going to talk about tonight is our answer. Real simple, because I'm not really complicated. So whenever I come and talk to you, I'm very childlike. Because if you want to be great in God's kingdom, I don't care about this one. All this stuff here, it's all been given to me. But if I want to be great in God's kingdom, I have to be two things. Childlike and a servant. That's why it's not unheard of for me. When I have a waitress that does an amazing job, I've given them $200 tips. Some of you are so freaking tight, you wouldn't give that if the, the cows come home and somebody gave you 45 cows. But I do it from the word because I said, that lady is serving me. She's doing a great job. Or guy, I, I've done it to guys. I don't care. I want to be a blessing or I'll never get blessed. If I'm so tight-fisted and you're living in fear because you won't have enough money to live out your life, then you're dancing with the devil. And what happens is you don't even do one single thing God asks you to do because you're living in fear of not having enough to live out your life. I've been through the fire. I've been through, through the time of testing, but I didn't sit in the fire and cry and whine and squall and bawl and say, God, why'd you put me here? You know what I did when I was in the fire? And all things give thanks, because this is the will of God in Christ Jesus. I would thank him. Say, Father, I'm in this thing to be a better man. So show me how to do that. Show, if it takes 10 years, it's okay. Because only recently, with all these trials I've gone through in 40-some years, 50, almost 50 years, I talked to the Lord about it. And I've said this in here before. The Lord said to me, your character is more important than your wealth. I said, I just want to be that man you wrote about. Nine months before May 22nd, 1949. I want to be that man. I want to be that. I want to be what's in that book. I haven't read it. It's probably in here somewhere. But I have something specifically written about me. And it's no better or different in a sense, or like as in better quality or something, it's exactly the same kind of thing because God knows how your mind works. I don't know how your mind works. I can talk to you and you guys can live together and do things. You still don't know how your mind works. You don't even know how your mind works. But God does. And those things that happen in your life are for the reasons that you need, not me. I don't need it. You need it. Whatever that is. And if you learn to look at it from a perspective, I'm not talking about living like a pulper. I'm not talking about being sick or some of these other stupid things that the church people talk about. Well, God made me sick so I could learn something. God didn't make you sick to teach you. He doesn't need the sickness and disease to teach the church. The Bible says the Holy Spirit is there to teach the church. Man, how many times I heard that? 
That's ignorance going to seed. The Holy Spirit's a teacher. Whatever that struggle is, it is a sickness. I've never had sickness and disease teaching me something. Not one time, but I've been through trial after trial after trial. I've learned my patience from my trials. Are you a 10 cent patient guy? Are you a $10 patient guy? Are you a $1,000 patient guy? Are you a $100,000 patient guy? Are you a million dollar patient guy? Are you a $100 million patient guy? You better learn how to do it or you'll never have any wealth. Because you'll make the wrong decision every time you turn around. You'll be going the wrong way as fast as you know how to go. Most of the time, you've got your tail between your legs running like a scared dog. I can't teach this in your life. I can teach you the principles. That's my job. But I can't teach you to do it. You've got to figure that out on your own. God didn't require me to do that. I'm a teacher. I'm not a doer in your life. God never asked me to do it. He told you to be a doer of the word, not a hearer only, who deceive themselves. You got to quit being deceived. That's another one of those principles there because the Bible calls the devil the great deceiver. This is greatest tool. You know, most people think the devil's like this. You got a red shirt on. It doesn't take any rocket science to know that's a lie. Does it? No. But if I say tomorrow you're going to have a red shirt on, and what's going to happen is there's going to be a dog come out of the neighborhood and he's going to bite you in the leg. you think that's funny, wouldn't you? Why well, would you put that red shirt on and it happened? All of a sudden, it's not so funny anymore, is it? You'll kind of blow it off. Nah. That pain and that bite just kind of keep working on you. And you know what? Something else will happen. And then something else will happen. Something else will happen, and it makes sense. And you'll think, wow, this is bad. Have you had any friends that ever said, hey, nothing good happens to me. Everything happens. I mean, everything I try to do something, it fails, and everything I go, wherever I go, it just don't work. And I mean, everything just falls apart my whole life. Ever had anybody talk to you like that? I'll never have anything. That comes from this simple, stupid little illustration. They tried something that didn't seem like it worked, so they quit. Then they did it again, and they quit. And then they did it again, and they quit. And every time the spirit of failure, a demon, comes to you and says, well, that ain't ever going to work. That's the dumbest thing you ever did. And you know when he speaks to you that? When you're waiting on that thing to happen that you're believing for. And from the time you start it to the time God has a plan for it to be over because he wants to build character in your life, that demon is going to come and he's going to tell you that you are stupid waiting for that thing to happen. It's never going to happen. You don't have the what it takes. You don't have any money. Well, that's a fool's errand. Why? You, you know, your, your dad and mom told you that's a dumb thing or your buddy told you that's a stupid thing or something else. And that all gets told to you from the moment you start something to the time when God brings it to pass. In that space, that may be an hour, that may be a day, that may be a year, that may be 10 years. I've stood 10 years 
speaking every single day, sometimes 20 times a day. Put that on. And can God trust me with places like this? Everybody says, oh, he's just got money. Look at all the money he's got. I mean, you know, I mean, they had, there was people saying things about me. I, Doyle, he's greedy and he just does this. They don't have any idea who I am. They just, they don't know where I've been, what I've gone through, the struggles I've had. All they think is I got more than they got and I must have got it crooked. Yeah, he drives that new car and he does this and does that. Shoot, I didn't care. I drive. I drove a car for nine, almost 18 years. I had 300,000 miles or something like that. I don't even remember anymore. I didn't care. Because I come to the conclusion 40 years ago, I don't need to impress you and I don't need to impress anybody. I don't care what you think. I knew I was going to get hassle. I knew I was going to get crap. I know people were going to talk behind my back. To be real honest with you, I've never one time had anybody look me in the eye and talk to me. Do you know that? Not one time. They all talk behind my back. Sometimes I'd hear it in an unusual way. You know why? Because I take care of the devil every day. He's a thief. He comes to kill, steal, and destroy because God has a plan for your life and he's doing everything he can to steal it from you. That's all he knows. Do you know God won't let him know nothing else? God, God just taught me something just today about him. I don't have, I'm probably not going to have time to get there from the front. So I'm just going to jump right here. And we'll give you a little nugget of wisdom right from the word of God. This is what the devil said. And this is what God told me about it because I've never seen it before. Luke chapter four, verse six. And the devil said to him, all this authority I will give you. And he's talking to Jesus. All this authority I will give you and their glory. For this has been delivered to me and I give it to whomever I wish. And I've heard the preachings that Adam and Eve gave it to him. And the Lord spoke to me today and he said, they didn't give him the earth because the Bible says the earth is the Lord's in the fullness thereof. And I've been listening. I've heard that preaching for years. God says, I still own this earth. What Adam and Eve gave him was the management of it. He don't own nothing. And he's a liar and a deceiver. Am I right? What do you think he was doing to Jesus? Trying to get him to come on his side, lying to him. I've never seen that before. Isn't it confusing sometimes? You hear one thing about this and then about something about that. And then you watch David. He went around killing giants and killed. He wiped everything out. And yet, well, how did he do that if the devil had the authority over it? If, if the devil was it, owned it? All he can do is manage the people that don't know Jesus and don't know God. He can't, he, he, he can't manage God's people. And I look back through that this, today and I said, God, you whooped the daylights out of him all through the Old Testament and now all through the New Testament. He never has had that power and authority. He's a liar. He said that's all he knows how to do.
When God, the devil comes to you and say you're sick, what do you do? I know how I feel. Oh, man, isn't that pain in your stomach a really big deal? I mean, you probably got some kind of cancer in there. You better go get it checked out, dude. The Bible says all power and authority has been given to Jesus, and he gave it to us. Now, you want to know the truth? You just got it. He don't have any truth, and he has no power. He has management of the world out here, but he doesn't have management of the church. Because God gave you all power and authority. That turkey shouldn't be taking anything from you. I don't care what it is. He has no power and authority over you unless you give it to him because God gave you all the power and authority and every time you listen to his lies, you're giving him the power and authority. Not to everybody, but to you. You give him power and authority in your life. You aren't giving it to your wife or you're not giving it to your friends or anybody else. You're giving it to, you are giving the devil authority in your life when you buy into the things that he speaks to you and you listen to it and you believe it. You believe it because your whole past and all the experiences that you've had shows that, yep, you're absolutely a piece of crap and worthless. And God says it over and over and over and over again. You're one of my kids. I wonder if Joseph Kennedy, who was one of the most famous guys in our past, he was the father of John and, and uh, Robert and uh, who is the youngest one? Ted. I wonder if Joseph Kennedy... One of the neighbors come in and said, you're one of your kids is a piece of crap. He is as worthless as anything there is. What, what do you think Joseph would say? Oh, yeah. Yes, I'm just, he's just worthless. I just. Uh... I'll tell you, he'd get a real good whipping. And don't ever come back. You should not ever have a perspective of your life of anything other than you are one of God's kids. And you get every promise. You get all the benefits. You get all the glory, all the goodness, all the wonderful things that come from that. Isn't that awesome? Parenting. What kind of a parent would you be if you got three kids at home and they're both they're all three starving, they all don't have no clothes on, and you're taking all your money downtown to give it to the homeless? What kind of parent would you be? Let's get ten neighbors lined up and let them know what you're doing, and let's get an opinion from ten people. Do you think any of them would be on your side? If you feel worthless, it's because the devil has lied to you and you believed it. It didn't come from the truth. You can't find that in the Word of God. That's the truth. Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. No man comes to the Father except by him. And where is he? Inside of you. That's why you have access. So don't get cocky. But you have it. And it can't be stolen from you. You can't lose it.
Jude 124, the TLB, the Living Bible. And now all glory to him who alone is God, who saves us through Jesus Christ our Lord. Yes, splendor and majesty, all power and authority are his from the beginning. His they are, and his they will evermore be. Kind of leaves the devil out, don't it? It says, his they are, and his they will ever be. They were never put in the, the devil's hands. So don't let those preachers lie to you. He doesn't have all power and authority. He just has some management. And one day he's going to go get a paycheck and it's not going to be there to get. Because he's going to be gone. God's going to ship his saddle home. And home is not a good place for him. Now listen. Yes, splendor and majesty, all power and authority are his from the beginning. His they are and his they will be evermore. And he is able to keep you from slipping and falling away. And to bring you sinless and perfect into his glorious presence with mighty shouts of everlasting joy. Amen. That's what he did on the cross. That's what he did when you accepted him as Lord. And he came into your life. He's going to protect you and keep you. Now, you want to go out here and play in traffic, help yourself. But I'll tell you, God will be screaming at you, yelling at you, talking to you all the way there. And then you're going to get smashed with a car and your spirit goes right to be with Jesus. And he'll say, oh, man, come on in. Man, how do you lose this in this deal? How do you lose? It's, your time here is just a vapor. But don't you want to accomplish? You know, that's what I believe. I believe that's judgment day for the believer. I believe God's going to pull out that book he wrote and he's going to compare it to what you did. And, and, and you, if, if he built just a few pages about you, and you completed those two pages, you'd be number one. And if he wrote 5,000 pages about Billy Graham and he only completed six, you're going to the back. Now, I just used Billy Graham as an example. Now, don't get all whacked out of shape about it. Because I know everybody here knows about him. I believe that's going to be our judgment. What he's seen you do and what he wanted you to do. But never took the time to find out. Because there's going to be a judgment of the believers. It's simple for the world. And he'll put it right up in your face. You'll, you'll just see it. You'll see it. I believe there's people in here that got amazing things. I've already done some amazing things. And I've not done nothing. If you can get to a place in your life where you can renew your mind, and prove that which is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. That means you get yourself totally out of the way and let the Holy Spirit totally have control. There's nothing impossible for you. Nothing. And God doesn't talk about age. But being lazy and slothful, those are all spirit things. There's a lot of stuff I don't have on that list. I gave you some of the bigger ones. The laziness is a demon, demon spirit. 
slothfulness is a demon spirit. You can hide and do whatever you want to do and think you're hiding about something. You're not hiding anything. Look at this country. Probably one of the, the biggest things that's, that's hurting this country is, is just that, laziness and slothfulness. And I'm talking about people that have jobs. People working at home, easy to hide there. But you work for a big enough corporation, they don't care, just as long as they got a warm body and you do a little something. But it's non-productive, and eventually that company will not survive. I don't care if it's what, what it is. Well, it's a tech company. They got all kinds of money. Yeah, I understand. But nothing survives the demonic spirit that says, I come to kill, steal, and destroy. Nothing will survive it except those who have come and say, I'm here that I would have life and have it more abundantly. Those are spared from the other side. I'll finish up with this. You want to be more than a conqueror? You want to live like it? You know what boot camp is? Are you a conqueror when you get out of boot camp? You're not a trained soldier yet. You're just disciplined and fighting, but you haven't had no experience yet, right? It's a lot of difference from the day you got out of boot camp and the day you got out of Afghanistan. Am I right? See, most people are just not even in boot camp let alone through it, and then out into the war. They're not even into boot camp, and they spend their whole lifetime trying to avoid boot camp, run from it, hide from it. What is boot camp? Patience, struggle, effort, getting up in the morning, going at it, doing everything. That you get. That's just boot camp. You ain't got no war until somebody comes up and says, I got $5 million I want to give you. Build me 34 houses. And I said, no thanks. Now you're getting into a war. Where's the war at? Right here. That's why God said the love of money is the root of all evil. Because it motivates so much. It motivates all of it. Just read the news, listen to the news. Watch what goes on in the friends around you and the people that you meet and all the stuff going on. But this is the key. You got to go to boot camp. You guys are in boot camp right now. Did you know that? Do you feel like you've been kicked in the rear end a few times? You're in boot camp right here. You can blow it off and lose everything you learned here. Go right back to the start and you spend the rest of your life doing that or at some point you just give up and don't even try anymore. But let me tell you what your number one weapon is. Do you know what your number one weapon is? Love.
You want to win in life? What's key? Act like God. Right? That's what we spend all this time to do. We try to do this so we can get our minds renewed so we can act like he does. What? Right? What's the, what the shortest verse in the Bible? Not Jesus wept. God is love. That's what he is. It's not what he does. It's what he is. Every movie makes, everything he does, everything he thinks about. It's just love because it's all he is. He isn't anything else. Everything else comes out of that. Kindness, goodness, meekness, faith, patience, self-discipline. That all comes out of love. What did I say the very first thing in this meeting tonight? Go find somebody and love them. How do you do it? Take it down and outer and tell them, God misses you. And you explain to them that there's a story been written about you. And it was written before you were ever conceived in the womb. He wrote it down. And he has something for you to accomplish in life. He needs you. That's a lot different than talking love. God loves you. What's that mean? Don't mean nothing. He wants to know what you do. And he don't want you to tell him you love him. He wants you to demonstrate it. Figure out in your mind what loving that person would be like. You got somebody you're in conflict with, you better go get that fixed right now. Eat crow. Die to yourself. That's what that means. Go get it fixed. Get everything out of the life that you're living that stands between you and God's blessing in your life because God's waiting. He has certain rules and certain laws and he won't violate it. I don't care how much you think you've deceived him or somebody else or lied or whatever you've done. He has certain rules and certain principles that you have to follow. And love is your key. Memorize it. Patient and kind, not proud, rude, easily angry, self-seeking, does not boast, does not envious, does not delight in evil, but rejoices with the truth, keeps no record of wrong suffered. Do you walk in love? If you're keeping a record of a wrong suffered, you ain't walking in love. And you just got thrown off the bus. Love always trusts, love always hopes, love always perseveres, and love always uh, trusts. Huh? Love always, love, love always trusts, hopes, perseveres, and, prote and, and protects. Is that how you're acting? You don't know what you're acting that way or not. You don't have it memorized. You have no clue how you're acting. But the Bible says love never fails. You always want to win? Jeez, guys. Nope, I don't need to read those three scriptures. God said this to me. He said, you need not ever have destruction of any form in your life ever again. Jesus' blood has paid the price for your redemption and has ransomed you out of the power of darkness and into his marvelous light. It is your responsibility to walk in it. He offers it to you every minute of every day. 
Have control where you are going and what you are accomplishing. Number six, Jesus and the Holy Spirit are right there loving you, supporting you, and speaking to you, just like I'm asking you to do to the homeless person or to your neighbor. He is doing that to you because he's loving. Don't get discouraged. Don't get defeated. Don't get depressed. Don't go there. No, don't look over. Look, come over here. Love, joy, peace, gentleness, goodness, meekness, faith, patience, and self-discipline. Come over here. Don't go over there. That's the wrong way to go. And he'll follow you all the way over there, and he'll talk to you the whole time you're doing stupid. You will. These are things I've learned. I'm not talking about what I don't know. I'm telling you what I do know. That's the responsibility of a teacher. That's why most teachers are not teachers. Many of them haven't walked in faith in anything. Heavenly Father, we praise you. We thank you that I pray that you would help these men digest this word. Father, you, that, that they would take a, unto themselves what pertains to them because every one of them are totally unique and totally important and totally needed in the kingdom of God. It seems so small to me, Lord, for you to have me talk this way with such a small group. But Lord, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. A mustard seed is the smallest of all seeds and produces the greatest crop that man can get. It doesn't matter. So, Father, I pray that they will water this seed that's been planted in their heart. I declare them good ground in Jesus' name. And as it grows, their blessing will multiply and they will be faithful in how to deal with their blessings and how to love with their actions and not with their words. We praise you for it, Father. You alone are worthy. You can, you watch over your word to perform it. And I praise you and I thank you for it, sir. In the name of Jesus, amen.